Welcome to the Let It Be Light program. A very good morning to all of you. And as always, it is for us uh, a moment of thinking about what can change in your life. Every day we come here, we try to bring to you a message that will help you to know how you can change your life. Because when we take the word of God, we find here uh, the guidance for everything in our life. The word of God, the Bible is a source, an infinite source of teachings of wisdom and faith. The word of God brings faith to us. And I would like to invite all of you to join me now in a prayer. Usually we show a testimony and we share a verse of the Bible, but today I want to start the program praying for you. Maybe you feel so overwhelmed, so worried with something that you can't listen to absolutely nothing. You just need to put out all what is inside of you and you need help and you need to feel relieved, you need to feel healed from within. Perhaps you are suffering with pains in your body, but maybe you also need the inner be inner healing. So I have my glass with water already here prepared. I will give you a few moments so you can go prepare yours if you don't have it there yet. So we may join our faith and pray together. The cross up reach Jesus died is a shelter in which we can hide and its grace is so free is sufficient for me and deep is its fountain as wide as the sea there is room where the cross for you there is room at the cross for you though millions have come there's still room for one yes there's room at the cross for When we pray to God, we can receive strength, courage, faith, peace and anything we sincerely ask for. Take advantage of this moment, close your eyes, and raise your thoughts to God. It's time to pray. Dear Lords, it is in the name of the Lord Jesus that this morning we present the life of all those who now join us in this prayer. And whatever they may, they may go through now. Uh, you know all their suffering, all their issues, problems. You know very well what makes them cry what is not allowing them to have a peaceful, a peaceful night. They wake up in the midst of the night crying with, um, with their minds completely tormented by nightmares and evil thoughts. And well, that's not only in the evening, even during the day, they can focus on what they do, their work. They can just focus. It seems that their minds are constantly uh, blocked, constantly away, tormented. They, they hear voices when there's no one speaking with them. They feel scared all the moments, all the time 
have panic attacks and people, well, they think they are going crazy and no one understands them. Everyone are, is against them. Dear Lord, I want this prayer to bring to these people a, a relief right now, a relief uh, for them to be free from that torment. So may you use this water they have there with them and consecrate this water. Bless this water, O oh Father. They will drink the water with faith because they believe it's consecrated by you that has your anointing on it. And when they drink the water, may they feel your power removing from their minds those voices, that fear from their hearts, remove from their hearts all that bitterness, remove from their hearts that anguish and bring peace, bring tranquility to all of them. I declare the water blessed to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if you believe, you may say, Amen, and you may drink now the water. I interviewed a farmer who won for the fifth time the prize for the best farmer who produces the best corn cobs in the United States. And I asked him what is his secret to produce such good quality corn. He said, my secret is simple. I share my best seeds with my neighbors. I said, but how can you share the best seeds with your neighbors if they are your competitors in this tournament? He said, listen, the wind always blows the pollen of the corn and the wind is what spreads the pollen to the fields and makes the seeds grow. If my neighbors have bad quality corn, the wind and the bad quality corn will blow pollen of bad quality to my fields and my corn will grow with bad quality. So for my corn to be of good quality, I have to make sure that my neighbors have good quality corn. And this is marvelous because this is a secret for life. Our lives will only have the capacity to show its best if the people around us also receive the best from us. Many times people insist in achieving happiness in a selfish way. They want to be happy, but they don't care about the well-being of those who are around them. They don't care about the children, the friends, the wife. They look at colleagues as competitors and try to stand out by harming those who are around them. And in reality, when they do this, they will always reap the worse results than what they expect. Because when the wind of life blows, it always blows negatively in the lives of those who are selfish. We are living in a time where the world is divided. People are thinking about themselves. But I would like to invite you to share the best seeds that you have to those who are around you. Because the word of God says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. When we live together in unity, it is good and everything becomes more pleasant and light. I hope you may share to others the best you have. And in turn, you may receive in all areas of your life the best of quality, in well-being, in happiness and in plenitude. Share your best with the people that you love. Share your best seats. And I would like to use this moment to explain to you something about the altar. As you can see here, this is the altar of our church here in Liverpool. And in all our UCKG branches all over the world, usually, always, we have an altar in the church. And why? Because like the Ark of the Covenant for the people of God in the past, would represent God's presence amongst them, the altar represents God as well for us. Because this is the place where usually we invite people in the church to come and to surrender their lives to God. They, for them to leave here on the altar their burdens, their faults, their mistakes, their past, their sins, their weaknesses, 
and receive from the altar strength, new life, new heart, a new birth that only the Holy Spirit can give that. And look what God said to Moses many years ago, and this is valid to us as well. He said in the book of Exodus, chapter 29, verse 37, seven days you shall make atonement for the altar and sanctify it, and the altar shall be most holy. Whatever touches the altar must be holy. So as you can see, we place these poles here because no one is having, having access to the altar this week until Sunday morning. Sunday morning, everyone in all our churches, everyone will be invited to climb the altar. Why that, you may ask? Well, because according to God's words, once the altar is sanctified, the altar must, it says here, the altar shall be most holy. And whatever touches the altar, it, it, it will become holy as well. And this is the desire of God for you, for me, for all of us. And the Holy Spirit is the one that can do this. And we believe that all those, everyone, no exception, everyone who this Sunday will join us in this special 9.30 a.m. service and will come with the purpose of climbing the altar of God so you may leave your burdens, your sorrow, sorrows, that affliction that you carry inside of you, all those accusations you have in your mind, all that bitterness of heart, everything, you will leave all that here on the altar. You will come, you will climb this side, burdens, but you will go down on the, on the other side, renewed with a new heart, with the power of God in your life. That's why I want to invite you all to join us Sunday, 9.30 a.m., here, Liverpool, you can find us at 153 Northumberland Street, close to the Westfield Shopping Center in the heart of the city. But we have branches as well in Blacktown, Chatswood, Brisbane, Dandenong, and Footscray. If you want to know the addresses, you may go to our website, uckg.org.au. Every day, you carefully tend to what's important to you. You take care of your body, your home. You take care of your work, your family. But how do you take care of your inner self? We absorb so much destructive information and without realizing we poison our soul. We also run in vain towards even more useless distractions in the desperate search for relief. However, it's possible to terminate the insanity by taking the antidote for every poison, one that will truly make us well. Sunday is the ideal opportunity to invest in the most important part of yourself, to take care of your inner being and to prepare to receive the Holy Spirit in your life. Come and seek for this internal refreshment on the first day of the week. Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? Even after everything I achieved, why do I still feel incomplete? Is it really possible to be happy and complete inside? 
We can help you answer these questions. Call us now, 9602-9837. Hi, my name is Chris. I suffered from alcohol addiction, insomnia, suicidal thoughts. Um, and I, I received the oil and by faith I used the oil. I anointed myself every morning and every night. I mixed the oil in a glass of water and prayed and drank every morning and every night. In the result, I was blessed. So I was free from my alcohol addiction, free from my suicidal thoughts, free from insomnia, free from depression. I want to invite you and your family to come on the event, the blessed event the blessed oil event on 8th of september at 10 a.m at your nearest universal church we always try to give you an explanation how you can use the oil that you will receive on the day the 8th of September, so you may use that oil according to your needs, according to your faith, and you may anoint yourself, you may anoint people, you may anoint pictures of your family, you may anoint your house, you may anoint your car, you may anoint your place of work, you may anoint your business, you may anoint documents. Let's say that you are waiting for a long time already to receive uh, an answer from the lawyers, from a judge, from, I don't know, any, any, any sort of uh, uh, answer that you need from uh, uh, um, the government, and you, you don't have answers, or you are waiting for that and no one gives you answers. Well, you may use the oil, the blessed oil, to anoint the documents that you have, and use it with faith and you will be surprised because by doing that whatever is blocking will be will unblocked everything will be unblocked and the answer will come to you the answer will arrive because nothing can stand before the power of God and as we have been saying the oil is being consecrated to God, so that oil will have definitely in him the anointing of God. And every time that you make use of that oil with faith, you will see the manifestation of that power in your life. So don't miss the 8th of September, we, on, in which you will receive a bottle with oil similar to this one, and you don't have to pay nothing to receive the oil. Actually, you don't have to pay nothing. You, can, you will come to one of our UCKG branches and you will not be charged for nothing. You will not be charged to speak with a pastor. You will not be charged for the prayers you will receive on the day. You will not be charged to, to receive counseling. You will not be charged to enter in the church. You will not be charged for anything, absolutely nothing. Actually, if you want to leave your wallet at home, your card, uh, bank card at home, you want to leave mo your money, you, you, you can come empty of everything. You will be received like everyone else. You will receive prayers like everyone else. You will be counseled like everyone else. You receive the oil like everyone else. Because we are doing this to show to you that God can change that situation. The power of God can do that. And God wants you to know that. We are servants of God. We want you to know that God is a living God. And the word of God is valid nowadays. And there is no need for you to keep suffering the way you have been suffering until now. And that will be the day that your life will uh, will change things will change actually this sunday now as you saw previously the video that we recorded uh, um, uh, on our, on the altar talking about this sunday now the altar you don't need to wait until the 8th of september 
I encourage you to join us this Sunday now. And then, of course, on the 8th of September, you will come again to receive the oil. And everything, it's an opportunity for you to make things different and see your life changing. Okay? Well, have a wonderful day. Tomorrow, same time, I'll be back with the Let There Be Light program. The helpline number will remain, or the helpline number that you can see here, and the help email and the online pastor will remain available for you if you want to contact us. This is the number 02-9602-9837. Faith played a part in making me believe in myself to start off with and actually fighting towards having a real transformation in my life. I had gone through about three attempts of sexual abuse as a child. One that really marked me was when I was called to come to this place. As soon as I entered, the door shut behind me and I found myself in a room full of young boys around my age at the time and an older guy that was touching me inappropriately whilst all the young boys were there watching what he was doing. I screamed. I guess he got scared that the neighbours would hear us something. He backed off a little bit so I managed to open the door and run away. I had so much um, domestic violence going on in my house. My mom was in a very abusive um, relationship. She was a very young mom at the time. Home was just not a secure place to be at. I remember there was even one event where I was about 10 years old. My mom was in a very violent um, argument with um, her partner at the time and he took out a massive knife to stab her with. And myself being 10 at the time, my sister was about five. I remember putting her on my back, running out of the house to go and get help. The only person that I could think of that could help was an older sister that my mother has that lived about two hours away from us. So when we got there and told my auntie what was happening, her and her husband rushed us um, back to, to, to see my mom. Thankfully, when we got there, um, my mom was just seriously injured, but, you know, she was alive. I thought, OK, well, perhaps now my mom is going to start showing some more affection towards me. But that was not the case at all, because by the next day they were all you know loving on each other my mom would often beat me and so would her partner he was heavily addicted to um, alcohol as well so he would be very violent you know aggressive when he would hit I was often very suicidal there was constantly thoughts in my mind saying you know what well, kill yourself your mom doesn't love you so one day I decided to actually put that into action so I decided to run across um, um, in front of a moving vehicle, was hit by a car, was left on the floor unconscious. There were people all around me. They called my mom. The ambulance took me to hospital. And then my mom came running to the hospital, you know, worried of my child, what happened. And in that moment, for the first time, I saw that, wow, my mom actually cares about me. I felt that I had some sort of attention from my mother, it made me develop an addiction towards self-harming and, you know, putting my life in danger purposely just so that I could get the attention from my mother. At the time, my father was not living in the country. He was abroad. I actually came from a polygamous family. That was one of the reasons why my mom decided to separate from my father. She didn't want me to get in contact with him, but I went through her things, found his number, and I contacted him, told him what was happening, and he came um, to get me. So coming to the UK, I found myself jumping from home to home. Being the only child that my mother has with him, but then having several other siblings, I felt like the black sheep in the family. Family. Also, I had gone through a lot of paranormal activities where I would hear voices, I would see things to the point that I would wake up in the morning, I would see scars, um, bruises in my body because I couldn't speak the language. I was bullied at school when I came here to the UK. And the only way that I knew to defend myself was through violence. In a way that made me gain some sort of popularity and to the point that, you know, when I eventually managed to learn English, 
English. I started finding myself associated with people that were gang affiliated. We used to get bullied about how my physical appearance as well. So I never felt comfortable being around women. I never felt comfortable identifying myself as a female. I would be around guys. I would want to dress like them, walk like them, talk like them and became a tomboy. When my mom came to hit me at one point, I retaliated to the point that she ended up in hospital. The entire family hates me even more and, you know, say horrible things that I wouldn't amount to anything in life. And those words resonated with me for many, many years. So my stepmother at the time came to realize that my behavior wasn't normal. And then she invited me to come to the church. So when I came to the church, people seemed genuinely happy and and I wanted that. I would hear the pastor speak about how my life can be transformed. So he started speaking about the Holy Spirit, how he can give you a new heart, how he can give you a new nature. So I wanted that. And then that's when I decided to make the changes in my life. That's when I decided to get baptized in water. I started putting into practice everything that I was learning and seeking help from those that were in a position to help me. I just threw myself completely. I said, you know what, God, I'm going to tell you my whole life. Even though I knew that God already knew what, who I was, where I was coming from, but I felt the need to go back to the moments where I felt the lowest and tell him everything. And it was as if God became my therapist. What I never felt comfortable showing to people, I was able to put that out to God. And that's when he started to show me what was inside of me that was impeding me from having an encounter with him. I went back to my mother. I asked her to forgive me until one day when I was seeking God and I said, you know what, God, I don't know what else to say. Like I've said everything that was inside of me. And that was the day that God filled me with his spirit. And for the first time in my life, I came to know what love truly was. I am completely different. I no longer go through those paranormal activities that I used to go through. I'm no longer that angry, aggressive person. I no longer have the insecurities that I had. I don't need to dress like a guy anymore. I'm confident being a woman, being who I am. From someone who was constantly told that I would amount to nothing in life. I've actually gone ahead and done something with my life. I recently actually graduated from university with a first class honors. I am progressing in my career, which is within the field that I studied. My life is just totally different. I found peace. I have great relationship um, with my family. All of them now see me as an example of transformation and of faith. God you know, is able to use me to help many people who are currently going through all the situations that I went through. So definitely I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit.